Hi all, an absolutely amazing King's Gambit game here from Leela ID 529. So we're really stepping up things. Leela ID 529 against Stockfish 7 on a four core i7. Leela's with a 1080 graphics card. The set start position is from the romantic era of chess, the King's Gambit, and it's accepted. And we played a Bishop C4 Gambit line, allowing that potentially dangerous Queen H4. So this is the end of book given to both engines to simulate TCEC conditions when they, they give them start positions. Stockfish 7 plays the check. We have d6, knight c3, bishop e6, queen e2. Black plays knight d7 uh, to try and get on with castling queenside. Taking on e6 uh, is is nice for the queen there to ic7. It's, it's causing some issues for black. So that's uh, black just gets on with trying to castle queenside potentially. d4, knight g, f6. Knight f3 hitting the queen. The queen goes to h6, keeping an eye protecting f4. Knight d5. Now uh, black takes on d5 because the knight's also, I mean, there's two threats. Knight takes and also bishop takes f4 is supported. So that knight is taken off. Bishop takes. Black castles queen side. Also strong potentially is knight takes d5. If you want to check out the annotated PGN in my pinned comment, you'll see a lot of variations where knight d5 is also pretty useful and avoids this gambit continuation, which is played into. But it seems perfectly justifiable the king on f1 that black might consider this gambit to be a good idea. So bishop takes f7, bishop e7. So, and also, of course, protect the f4 pawns. It seems quite justifiable. Rook g1, knight g4. Now we have g3, and it looks as though with the king on f1, isn't this playing with uh, a lot of danger? Rook d f8, going into a self pin scenario, aren't we? Isn't this to be avoided? In fact, uh, Stockfish 7 gets quite excited by this position. I mean, who wouldn't? Uh, because there's a king on f1, the rook on f8, black's king's pretty secure. And there's an optimistic, or not. You know, you might not think this is optimistic. This is just cool. Knight takes h2, a peace sacrifice from Stockfish 7. What could possibly go wrong with this peace sacrifice? I mean, it's at least two pawns for the knight, right? After f takes g3 check, uh, queen g6, and there's also connected pass pawns, right? There's h5, h4, and this is going to crash through. So if we just take stock here, <laughs> Stockfish. I don't know how that happens. I do puns naturally without even thinking. We're going to take stock here. Three, four, five, and black has seven pawns. Black's only missing one pawn, that, the sacrifice pawn earlier on f7. Now, here, something really intriguing happen, happens. King g2. This might have been underestimated because after h5, bishop d2 h4 there's an incredible move i thought was visually stunning in this position to try and handle the impending h3 check uh can you guess it if i give you five seconds what would you play here okay king h3 nimzovich kind of ranks blockaders and he considers like the knight one of the best blockaders in general but in the specifics of a particular position, it's whatever must meet the requirements, right? Because rook h1 doesn't, you know, without blockading, then there's h3 check. This position is nasty, it's just pure nasty. White's just getting slaughtered, for example, has to do that, getting slaughtered. Uh, it's, it's a disaster scenario not to blockade with anything. So, that's uh, justified king h3 there's no immediate check and all of a sudden the evaluation drop on stockfish is even nine is starting to go plummeting down a bit here after king h3 this is a sign that white can start blockading quite effectively uh these extra pawns on the king side because there's, there's no pawns for white on on f g and h files and there's these pawns which are they going to be made to be frozen, basically? Rook g f1, rook h5. Uh, here, I mean, this this looks weird to play rook h5. I believe, I believe the the idea is to discourage uh, knight g5 and queen g4 as a tactic. 
so uh, if if oh so, so it looks it looks a bit quirky but I believe that's that's that was the idea uh, let's let's just move on though I think well I'll give you one example King h8 Knight g5 the idea is to go get this pin and that's because of the pressure on the f file this this is actually uh, plausible it's also hitting d7 so say Knight f6 this position is is even so perhaps this quirky move can be explained because of the tactical kind of invisible threat uh, of Knight g5 rook a e1 the rook just goes back it seems like a bit of a waste of time and this bit of the waste it's it's punished there's a, a more effective even more effective blockade is set up now with knight g1 the retreat knight g1 so the blockader is going to be substituted more effectively now after white handles that immediate concern queen e8 now we have king g2 so now white is ready for knight h3 and all of a sudden these are starting to get a little bit more frozen the ice i mean the water is turning into uh snow and then ice here in terms of these pawns knight b6 uh here h3 is just totally harmless this this is a totally harmless continuation white can just gobble all the pawns and make way to go on this side like capablanca against marshall just king goes on the queen side so um basically uh knight b6 is played bishop b3 and this bishop also like the blockade seems to have an evolving uh career path in this game i mean the blockade of evolution is high but where is this bishop going have a look at this first the blockade is installed so these these pieces these pawns are starting to get totally frozen now black is positively encouraging this bishop uh to have a nice career it first goes to bishop uh, bishop d1 supporting things like queen g4 now if the queen was on d7 which it does go to so the queen g4 is fully supported but first white also tickles black on the queen side with b3 uh we have now rook c8 i mean queen g4 was also a decent move it, it wasn't really a major concern uh here with this this position is, is nice for white anyway but b3 and now uh, we have queen g4 queen b5 taking off yeah white's just a, a nice comfortable piece up and the pawns are pretty fragile they're probably going to be uh they're going to be taken off for example like this with knight f4 coming in for knight g6 it starts to look unpleasant the pawns they're totally locked down and then their targets for for being just mopped up basically like this and then g3 drops so the compensation has just totally evaporated for the p sack it seems uh c4 driving the queen to an awkward place and now as i say the career path of this bishop not content with this diagonal or supporting uh you know g4 is now thinking about this diagonal with this move e5 believe it or not it seems uh, funny enough from light square locations why it's going from the defensive gear into a, a, an attacking gear very very quickly here and also creating a very dangerous central passed pawn with e5 so this is doing two things very dangerous passed pawn but now bishop f3 so this bishop which was once on a diagonal not relevant for black's king safety is becoming really relevant for coordinating with the queen now against b7 and we have immediately this battery set up tying down the black queen rook e2 97 b4 so b5 to try and chase the queen even to a worse location bishop f6 b5 and the queen ridiculously goes to a8 <laughs> uh. Uh, you might think why why <laughs> is this square chosen well here there is bishop e3 uh so say this then taking this is just crushing for white uh yeah bishop e3 is is fairly unpleasant if going into the self pin uh here uh i mean there's um well actually no it's it's not even about that with the battery pardon me bishop takes c5 and then we've got queen takes b7 mate yeah this battery blacks it's just not possible to do 
to do queen b6 because of bishop e3 so queen a8 e6 so white's not only got this beautiful battery on b7 this beautiful uh central pass pawn black's <laughs> pawn potential nullified from earlier queen occupying occupying a very central square now we have queen a7 here because that's hitting the knight that's defending the knight uh, we have bishop e3 putting the pressure on bishop e7 now not this the c5 issue makes the the, the e pawn crash through here after bishop g4 uh, we're going to see now after queen e5 uh, black is really starting to get uh, majorly concerned about the e pawn uh, black plays b6 which seems to further weaken the diagonal but if we look at this position bishop d6 as an example this position uh, the e pawn is pretty strong here and crashing through with that pin on the knight there's bishop d7 as a possibility for example this variation uh, here there's bishop d7 and that e pawn combined with everything else the pin is just really nasty so let's have a look b6 it seems really bad so we can the light squares further bishop takes black is forced to unblockade the pawn because on, on taking there's b6 uh, that pawn's pin so say queen takes then there's rook b2 pinning the queen so black's forced to uh, play an unblockading move the pawn steps further and now rook f7 supporting the pawn bishop d6 queen d5 meaning that bishop f3 is also now on the cards as well uh, that that ties down the queen to, <laughs> to to guard now a7 and b sorry a8 and b7 uh, now just rook takes g7 it's it's real a disaster for black this whole position but this is uh, just hopeless Harry carry queen takes d6 check just giving up the bishop I mean it's it's a totally hopeless uh, position here so uh, black just basically gives up there and here black officially resigns the rooks lost and just massive material down and yeah rook and knight down so uh basically yeah black resigned here after bishop after after king c8 resigns in effect so king's gambit i thought what was really impressive about this game initially to be honest was king h3 I thought that was a shocking blockade which is justified by the position and then the replacement of the blockade with a much better knight completely nullifying the pawns but then what caught my attention was the bishop career path in this game uh, but sort of nudged encouraged by black you know bishop d1 supporting queen g4 and then to f3 later and then the bishop and queen started working on the diagonal in conjunction with the strong central pass pawn it's like a, an artistic kind of bit of work, uh, mastery artistic chess at work here in this game from the king's game it accepted i thought it was really kind of wonderful stuff i hope you enjoyed it too as much as i did comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much